Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us this morning. My name is Joe Kozlowitz. I'm on the marketing team here at Greenhouse Data. Um, I'm excited to have Aman Sharma joining us this morning to share his expertise. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping to start. If you want to ask questions at any time, uh, we will take some of them in the middle uh, as things work out. So use the questions box in GoTo or the chat window. Uh, but your lines are muted, so be sure to go through GoTo for those. Um, I believe we will have one or two more webinars in this series uh, before the month is through, so keep your eye out for more as your knowledge. Um, I'm going to give a brief introduction to Greenhouse Data, and then I'll hand things off to Aman. Greenhouse Data focuses on operationalizing innovation. So we're a managed IT service provider. We're heavily focused on cloud services and data center. So we focus on simplifying your IT operations. We extend your existing IT teams, and we have a large portion of our team dedicated entirely to technical and client-facing roles. Um, so we're looking for partners who need hands-on management to support growth and scale in the cloud and who need a strategic partner to do so. We have offices across the United States and internationally, and we also have nine data center facilities as well. Um, we're platform agnostic, however, so we work in Azure, we work VMware, really anywhere your IT loads live, we can help you. Here you see our client distribution and some logos you might recognize. Um, we work primarily with large private, public, and mid-market organizations. We're a service-driven organization, so we're very hands-on, very responsive. Uh, we pride ourselves on responding to any ticket in 15 minutes or less, so very much a customer support-driven group here. Um, we really have a lot of multi-cloud management expertise, as well as professional services, consulting, DevOps frameworks, and we can work all the way from your down stack, base level infrastructure, up through the applications that you're using day to day. Here's our agenda for today. So Aman's gonna run through JSON 101. He's got some ARM template components to show you, helper functions, and there's also going to be demos for all of these, so he'll really get hands-on and show you how to, how to do all of this. Aman is a Microsoft Azure MVP as well as a published author, and we do have one book that is relevant to today's presentation. We'll show you those details at, towards the end. He's a principal technical consultant with us here at Greenhouse Data focused on development and infrastructure. We've got his contact info here. Please feel free to take that down and reach out to Amon directly. We'll also throw this back up at the end in case you have any questions that you think of later. So without any further ado, here is Amon. All right, thanks a lot, Joe. Uh, I'll start sharing my screen. Can you see the uh, presentation now? Yeah, we can see you. Perfect. So I'll start uh, with the expectations of this session. So you will learn a lot about ARM templates. There is a lot to cover, so much so that I wrote an entire book around the topic. But the crux of it, the 90% of what ARM templates is, we will be covering in this particular session. We'll be building from basics up. And if you already know about ARM templates, you will definitely learn a trick or two. So let me start with why we are talking about ARM templates or why it is a very important topic that you need to know if you are working with Azure uh, at all, if you are creating resources, if you are uh, doing operations on those resources, you need to know about ARM templates. It's an automated way of deploying any resource in Azure. 
it provides you with an infrastructure, a framework which is repeatable and predictable, and they are everywhere. Any resource that you want to create, you can build an ARM template to deploy that resource. Any configurational change that you want to do on that particular resource, for example, configuring a backup on a VM, or configuring log analytics uh, to monitor a VM. You can even do that after deploying the actual VM. Uh, the configurational changes like these, you can do those using the ARM templates. And every day, new and new ARM templates are coming into the market. You can't talk about ARM templates without talking about the language in which it is written, which is JSON 101. So let's do a quick primer what JSON is so that you build your basics. Uh, you have the strong foundation on which ARM templates is built. So what exactly is JSON? Uh, JSON is JavaScript object notation language. It's a text-based data format. It's better than XML, arguably. According to me, it's better than XML because uh, with XML, you have redundant data. JSON is very concise, very uh, briefed, a bridged version of XML to represent the same data that you can represent using XML. In addition to that, you have multiple components like uh, objects, arrays, and nesting of objects within uh, another object that you can have in JSON for which there is no construct or little construct available in XML. So these three objects, the three components which makes uh, the JSON what it is, if you understand these three concepts, and they are very easy to understand, if you know how to represent these three objects, you know everything about JSON that is there in order to build ARM templates. So let's look at these three objects one by one. Let's first of all look at what an object is. An object is any real life object. For example, an employee can be an object, a department can be an object, a virtual machine will be another object, storage account, another object. So any real life object that you work with can be donated in JSON as an object. So these have properties and a value for each of these properties. For example, if you have an employee object, it will have a name object, a name property that will have particular value. It will have an age property, salary, department, and so on and so forth. The whole JSON file in an ARM template, that is also an object in itself. So any object, whenever you see an ARM template or any JSON uh, anywhere, if you see curly braces anywhere, uh, that is curly brackets, immediately think about objects. One curly brace equals one object. It can have multiple objects inside it, which we'll see in the third section, but any one curly bracket donates one object in JSON. Within that curly bracket, you will have key value pairs uh, in this particular format. That is, a key will be in double uh, quotes and then colon and then the value for that particular key or property. And then each property will be separated from the next property via a comma. The last property will not have any comma. Let's look at an example of this so that this makes more sense. So right here, I have an employee object. An employee object is donated by this particular curly bracket. And then this particular object has multiple properties in it. For example, name is John, age is uh, an integer, which is 34. It has department, uh, salary, and whether John is admin or not. Now look at the different data types and how they are represented in an object within JSON. On the value side, on the property side or key side, on the left, that is on the left hand side, everything is inside double quotes. That donates your key or property. Its value on the right hand side, that's a different story altogether. If you put it in double quotes, that means you are providing that as a string value. If you're providing a number, that means this is an integer, a simple number. And if you provide true or false, that means it's a Boolean. It can either be yes or no answer. Now, let's say you have a department in which there are multiple employees. What do you call a collection of employees? That is the answer, which is a second concept in JSON, which is an array. And how you donate an array? It is represented via square brackets. Anywhere you see square bracket, that means it is going to be an array. Even if it will have only one object in it, it will still be an array. So in, the, in this example on the right-hand side, 
the square par parenthesis, uh, the beginning and the ending, they donate an array. And within that array, we have multiple objects. The first object is an employee named John. Second is Mary. Third one is Matthew. Now the last concept, which is a little bit complex, but uh, let's try to simplify this via an example. Last concept is that you can have nesting on off, off objects. What that means is you can have objects within another object. An example of this is an employee whose name is John. We earlier saw uh, age, department, salary, and is admin is known to us, but his address is another complex object. His address will include street number, street name, unit number, unit uh, city and country, etc. So instead of providing it as a simple value, it is another curly bracket. So this particular section on the right hand side, this is another object. So the employee object will have an address object as the value of its address property. That's all there is to know about JSON. If you know these three concepts, that is curly brackets, they donate uh, an object, and square parentheses, they donate an array of objects, and then you can have one object inside another object. That's all there is to know about JSON as pertaining to ARM templates. Now let's look at a very basic, very simple ARM template, and then we will build from there. What exactly makes an ARM template? Let's look at bare minimal and then we'll dissect it into its further components. Bare minimal and ARM template looks like this. And immediately by looking at this, you can identify that the whole template itself is surrounded by curly brackets. That means the whole template itself is a JSON object. Then parameter is an object which will have multiple sub objects in it. And then variables is another object. Uh, uh, it has its value as an object. And then resources has its value as an array. Resources is a group of multiple objects. For example, you can have a VM, its NIC card, its storage account, uh, its backup object, all club together within the same ARM template as different resources in this particular section. Now, the schema, it tells you about what the schema is or from where to validate this template's structure. And then the content version is for you to be able to version this particular template. Let's dissect it further and see what these uh, components are in details. The outputs was not on there, and the reason for that is uh, this is the least used uh, property of ARM templates, and you will not see this on most of the ARM templates. But if you want to output anything from your ARM template, for example, uh, you are building out a VM, you are deploying a VM, and then how to connect to that VM, you want to uh, spit that out as an output, you can do that by using the output property. But primarily, the three properties that are important to us are parameters, variables, and resources. Parameters and variables, they are not required, but they are very, very useful. Uh, resources is, as we said, that it's an array of objects. And this is the way you provide what resources will be deployed in an ARM template. So let's just focus on these three primary objects uh, and let's just dive further deep into what makes these objects and why these are important to us. Let's look at parameters. So parameter is the way you provide input uh, values to your ARM template. Parameter is what makes an ARM template repeatable in multiple environments. For example, I built an ARM template for uh, deploying a virtual machine then how would you use that same template and deploy it multiple times so that you can deploy multiple virtual machines using the same template? Parameters is your answer for that. So in here, for example, I'm providing virtual machine name, admin username, admin password, Windows OS version as some of the parameters for this particular template. Further than this, as we saw nesting objects, you can have uh, the admin username uh, parameter provider as shown on the screen. So a typical parameter in an ARM template looks like this. It will have a type which shows what the data type of that uh, parameter is. Uh, in this case, it is a string value. It has a min length. You can also optionally provide a max length for this parameter. 
it has metadata metadata acts as a tooltip when you are trying to deploy this particular template uh, in this case that metadata is simply username for your virtual machine it's a best practice to build everything into a parameter that you see is going to change for the template and for which you want the input from the end user now this is a parameter now let's talk about variables how variables are different from parameters is that parameters is something that end user will provide variables is something that you have already decided and is a uh, in a sense a parameter that for which you have already provided a value and which is going to be uh, referenced multiple times in your template so you reference your variable instead of providing the exact hard coded value in your template you use the concept of variables you hard code the values at the variable level and then you reference these variables multiple times in the resources section now later on if you want to change a particular variable you will need to change the value only at one point and then because you're not referencing the value for the variable itself that value will get reflected anywhere this is being referenced in any of the resources for example vm size or virtual network name let's say in your arm template you are building three vms with different set of data disks with different set of um, properties uh, in those vms and then all of the vms they are referencing single virtual network which is uh, what you have provided as a variable you don't want the end user to know what your virtual network is your end user is only going to leverage and use your virtual machine so this is not a parameter this is a variable and since this is being leveraged by multiple vms in your template that's why we have created this as a variable now let's say you deploy this arm template in your dev subscription you will have a different value for the virtual network name and then you'll take the same template and want to deploy it in the test subscription you will have a different value for the virtual network name so you will be able to update that at the variable section without exposing that as a parameter to the end user now the last component uh, in an arm template the last component in an arm template is a resource as we saw earlier this is an array of multiple objects so as you can see it has the square parenthesis even if there is one resource it will still have a square parenthesis because internally in the schema of arm template this is of the type array and not a single object now the multiple objects in it let's look at how one of the object in it looks like that is one resource inside the resources look like each resource inside the resources it will have an api version which is required this is how the internally behind the scene the apis know how to interpret this and how to deploy the actual resource it has a type uh, for example the type for virtual machine is microsoft.compute/virtualmachines type for storage is microsoft.storage uh, it will have a name name is what you will provide it will either come from parameters or from variables or you can even hard code this name is uh, the way you which the way through which you will provide the actual name of the resource for example vm01 vm02 if you want to use the names like that for your vms you will provide it as the name property for each and every object location is the geographical location uh, in azure where this template or where this particular resource will be deployed what this means is that you can deploy a single arm template and through the single template you can deploy resources to multiple locations you can deploy some resources to east us locations while other resources to west us locations and then have them in a highly available configuration talking to each other tags is there to enable you to categorize your different resources if for example one resource depends on another you can leverage the property called depends on for example if you are building a vm and in the same template you have one resource as the nic card of the vm second resource as the storage uh, data disk third resource as the actual vm so before building the actual vm the nic card as well as the storage disk that needs to be already there so 
what you can do is using the depends on property on the virtual machine you can make that uh, the virtual machine resource itself will depend on the actual disk or the nic card and only once the nic card and the disk are provisioned only then the vm will be provisioned so that kind of conditional dependencies you can use you can built into your arm template using the depends on property which is available for each and every resource within resources section any other properties for example for a storage account the type of the storage account for a virtual machine what its hardware profile is its storage profile is all those sections they are clubbed into a master section called properties and then if you want to have nested resources you can have those for example a virtual machine can have a nested resource which which can be an extension on the vm uh, it could be a script extension on the vm or log analytics extension on the vm that has to be a nested resource on the vm this is an example from an actual resource how an actual resource looks like um, let's inspect what this resource is this is one resource object within the array of resources this resource is of type microsoft.storage/storage accounts that means we are building a storage account via this particular storage uh, object the name of this is coming from a variable this is how you reference a variable you will just have inside the quotes you will just have square parenthesis uh, keyword variables and then in the circular parenthesis and single quote you will have the name of the variable we'll see this in action in a one of our demo then you can have uh, the api you have to have the api version this is the required parameter you can have a location attribute it can be as simple as east us or it can also be derived we'll see uh, what is happening here or how is this being derived from the resource group then tags is an object uh, which is collection of multiple key value pairs uh, and you can customize these tags based on your requirement based on your environment the simple property on the storage account is its account type in here its account type is also coming from another variable of uh, name vst storage type this takes us uh, to one demo before going into demo uh, if there are any questions i can take those up we do have one aman and that is can i create an arm template to duplicate resources that i have already deployed uh, yes, we absolutely can. And in fact, I'll show you uh, uh, in a later demo how you can do that. So if you have already deployed a resources, you don't need to create an ARM template. You can generate an ARM template using Azure portal, and then you can modify that template and deploy it in any number of envir environments as you want. Let's jump into our very first demo. So now you know a little bit about ARM templates. You want to start building your own ARM templates. The very first thing that you would want to do is not start from scratch. You want to bootstrap your ARM templates development. You want to create the ARM template development not from scratch, but you want to reuse the work that somebody else has already done. You do not want to reinvent the wheel. So what are the different ways that you can do that? One of the way is that Microsoft has provided a repository. You can navigate to that repository in the quick start templates. I'll share this link later on as well. This particular repository is in GitHub. You can also add to this repository. If you end up building a new resource, you can add to this repository. You can see there are 759 contributors and your name can be up there. Um, the amount of templates that are already there, is huge there are templates for microsoft resources as well as third-party resources as you can see building out tomcat on ubuntu vm within azure uh, with vsts integration uh, things like this there are so many templates to choose from the chances are the scenario that you are going to build that will be here this is a very good starting point that you start uh, from here for example the storage account uh, So the storage uh, related template that we were seeing in the demo earlier. Uh, let's see uh, what you can find here. 
So in here, you will find a JSON file as well as the parameter file, for, which is also a JSON. So any template that you will see, it will always have two files. One is the JSON file itself, and second will be the parameter files through which you can supply the value of the parameters we talked about. We'll look at this JSON, not from here, but from a different screen. So the second way to find a template for something that you can build from Azure portal as well without uh, typing the whole thing yourself is to actually create the resource. For example, a storage account that we saw as an example. If I go through the wizard to create the storage account, I provide it with a dummy value. And then I navigate through the next wizard, uh, clicking next and next providing all the values that you need. For most of the resources, not all, for most of the resources, you will see that when you run uh, through the creation wizard of that particular resource, you will see this particular small link at the bottom, which says download a template for automation. If you click on this, it will open up another window, which will have nothing but again, it will have an ARM template for that. And it will also have a parameter files for a uh, file for that. So let's inspect what we just saw in an action in actual environment. So in here, you can see that on the left-hand side, it gives you the overview of what three primary sections are, which are parameters, variables, and resources. So in this particular template, it has six parameters. You can inspect those here, or you can inspect in the actual ARM template on the right-hand side. Even if you click on the left-hand side, it will take you to that particular section on the right hand side. So in here you have the Azure storage account name and location, everything as a type. And then you don't have any variables in this particular template, but you do have resources. And there is only one resource in this particular template. And as we saw earlier, uh, this uh, resource has the type as Microsoft.storage slash storage accounts. This is the type of this particular resource, which is an actual storage account. I'll show you a quick way if you want to find out the type that of a, any resource in Azure, how you can do that. You have the name, which is coming from the parameter that we specify in the parameter section. You have the location, which is also coming from parameters. You have the properties. Properties are its access tier and whether it supports HTTPS traffic only or not. And then this is the depends on attribute that I was talking about for each and every resource. Right now, there is only one resource in the whole template, so it does not depend on anything. A resource does not have to depend on something that is inside uh, the ARM template only. It can depend on something that is not in this ARM template. For example, you are building a VM, which depends on a virtual network that should already be present in Azure. So you can provide the ID of that particular virtual network in here, and then if that virtual network does not exist in Azure, that particular ARM template deployment will fail. Similarly, there are some other properties like SKU and KIME, which are specific to, the, uh, to this particular storage account. And this is, in nutshell, the whole ARM template uh, which we have generated for creation of the storage account. Now, if you want to deploy this ARM template, this wizard also gives you the option uh, to do so using CLI that you can invoke from any Linux machine. It gives you the option to deploy this using PowerShell, not just deploy, but also validate, uh, as well as .NET and Ruby. Now, if you want to download this template and make changes to this, you can do so by clicking on the download button, and then you can even add it to a library so that you can refer to this later on uh, by clicking on this add to library button. It will ask you for some uh, values like, uh, and then a description for this template. Now, once you have it in your library, you can reference this later on. Uh, in the under the template section, or you can even reference this later on when we'll look at how to deploy a template in our next demo.
Any questions so far on how to find an uh, ARM template and how to inspect an ARM template? All right, so jumping on to the, before we jump on to the next section, let me show you how to inspect the ARM template in Visual Studio. So this is a similar template that I have already downloaded and open in Visual Studio. If you are a developer or you have been working with Visual Studio, this is how you uh, inspect the template in Visual Studio. The thing that you need to know about Visual Studio is, one, you need to have the calculator APIs installed. If you want to build a template right from Visual Studio, or if you want to inspect or work with templates, then you do not need anything. The Visual Studio that you already have, you can leverage that and inspect the ARM template or modify the ARM template as well. The window that you are most interested in, in as far as Visual Studio is concerned, is this an ARM template window. You can reach this window by going to the View tab if you don't have it open already, and then navigating to other windows. In here, you will find the JSON outline window right here. What this JSON outline window provides is a way to inspect your JSON uh, file. Just like we saw in the portal, you can inspect what parameters are here, what are the different variables, what are the different resources, and uh, optionally, what are the different outputs. So in here, you can see that I have storage account name as a variable. And then under resources, uh, under the name, instead of accessing the parameter, I'm accessing the variables in the way we saw during the presentation. That is square parenthesis, keyword variables, circle parenthesis, and the name of the variable in the uh, single quotes. If you are trying to access any parameter, for example, the location parameter, it's in the same way instead of variables, the keyword becomes variables, and then the name of that particular parameter that you want to access, uh, which in this case is location. If you understand the concepts behind this simple template, these are the same concepts that get applied to multiple resource uh, based template or any uh, complex template that you can think of or find out there on the internet. Now let's hey, Iman, I've got a quick question. Sure. Um, if a VM has been migrated from on-premises to the cloud, is there a template builder for that VM? Absolutely, uh, there is one. So for example, you need to delete or recreate a VM. And in fact, while I'm addressing this question, I can address the earlier question, uh, which was how you can replicate one environment or duplicate one environment to another. So for example, this is one virtual machine that I have in my environment. So for each and every resource, or even at the resource group level, what you will do is, uh, navigate to that resource like we just did for this particular virtual machine. And then you find the section for automation script. So this is located at different location for each and every resource. You click on the automation script and then it will give you a template for not just this particular VM, for, but for all the resources in the resource group for this particular VM. So for example, this particular resource group has a key vault. It has two NIC cards on the VM, and then it has a public IP address. It has a virtual network. It has three storage accounts and a couple of extensions on the VM. So you can see that it automatically generated the template for me. Now all I need to do is uh, hit download or add it to my library, and then I will be able to reuse this. Once you download it, it will download a zip file and that zip file contains, uh, as I said earlier, a JSON file for the template itself, which is this template right here, and a JSON file for the parameters and a PowerShell script. In fact, the template that I was showing earlier in the Visual Studio, it is the one that I downloaded from uh, the Quick Start Gallery. It had the JSON as well as the parameters.json and then a PowerShell script for the deployment. I hope uh, this answers that question. And also the question. Yes, I think so. Thanks. One. Yeah, no both problem. of them said thanks. Perfect. So I'll jump back to the presentation. Now let's talk about something called helper functions. 
uh, we briefly saw this in one of the demo. I skimmed through that uh, because I thought that it will make much more sense in the second demo when we'll be actually deploying the resources. Now, when you're building ARM templates, you do not want to hard code things like e even the location or the resource group to which you are deploying, the subscription to which you are deploying. You want to dynamically provide the value of those resources. You do that using something called helper functions. The first helper function that we are going to take a look at is the resource ID helper function. Resource ID helper function, this is uh, how it looks like. Resource ID helps us identify the ID of any resource in your environment. This comes in very handy uh, in referencing other resources in your actual resources. For example, if you want to uh, reference a virtual network while building a VM, resource ID is the way to do it. You do not want to hard code the value of the ID of the virtual network uh, in which you are deploying your VM. You would rather use the resource ID. And the way it works is you would provide the subscription ID. This is optional. Then you can provide the resource group name. If you are deploying your resources to the same subscription, you do not need to provide the subscription ID. You provide the resource group name. If you're deploying to the same resource group, then you don't even need to provide the resource group name. Then you provide the resource type, uh, just like the type we saw earlier, Microsoft.compute slash storage account. Uh, similarly, there is a type for each and every resource. And then the actual resource name. So for example, down here, uh, you can see the two ways I have provided to reference a virtual network. The first way is if you're deploying a virtual machine, for example, to a different resource group, you reference the resource group of the virtual network. Then you reference, uh, you provide the resource type, which is Microsoft.network slash virtual networks. And then you provide the value of the actual virtual network name. Through this dynamically, the actual resource ID of that resource is uh, automatically generated by the underlying APIs, and that is what is required to reference to programmatically access that resource. Only the name of that resource is not enough. You need to reference its complete ID, and this is a dynamic way to generate that ID. Another way is if you're deploying to the same resource group, you can simply have the type, which is Microsoft.network slash virtual networks, and then the name of the virtual network. Second very handy helper function is resource group. Using this function, you can reference the name of the resource group, the location of the resource group to which you are deploying the resources. Most of the time, it makes sense to reference the location of the resource group itself if you're deploying multiple resources instead of hard coding the location of each and every resource or even building out a parameter for the location when you can reuse the location of the resource group where you're deploying that ARM template. By the way, uh, if you don't know, any ARM template that you deploy, it gets deployed at a resource group level. Uh, Essentially, a resource is deployed inside a resource group. There can't be any resource in Azure which can exist without a resource group. Now there is a capability in the ARM templates through which uh, you can use something called management groups and even deploy resource groups using an ARM template. But all you need to know is that when you're building out resources, you have a way to reference your resource groups by using this particular helper function. For example, in the section below, uh, in the example below, uh, I'm building out a VHD storage name as uh, the storage account resource group uh, from the resource group name, the location from resource group location, and I can even reference the ID of the resource group. The third helper function that uh, you will find using uh, sparingly, uh, uh, I have not used this much, but uh, this helper function is your subscription. If anytime you want to reference your subscription ID, you can do so by using this particular helper function in the way shown in the example below. So subscription, square, uh, circular parenthesis, dot, and then subscription ID is its property. Subscription name is another property. Subscription ID through which you can access the ID of the current subscription in which you are deploying the current resource. The last helper function we are going to look at is concat. 
I have used this multiple times. Uh, this concat function, uh, what it does is it concatenates multiple values in it. You can provide any number of values uh, in a comma separated fashion inside the circular parenthesis after the concat function. This function simply finds out the value of each and every uh, section in the, uh, the comma separated sections and then simply converts them to string and concatenates them together. For example, for example, the subnet, if I want to build out an ID of for the subnet, what I'll do is I'll use the ID for the virtual network, which we calculated in the earlier section. Then I'll have concatenate uh, that particular ID with slash subnet slash, and then the name of the actual subnet on that VNet where I want to deploy my virtual machine. There are so many helper functions out there, but 90% of the times uh, you will end up using one of these four helper functions. The first one, the resource ID is the most used helper function along with concat. Resource group is the second most used uh, helper function uh, followed by the subscription ID. Other helper functions, they are not used that much, but if you end up going, getting into a scenario where you want to make something as dynamic as possible. You want to look at what helper functions are out there and whether there is a helper function that can help you make the template more dynamic uh, as per your requirements. After helper functions, we want to understand what are the various tools to author ARM templates. So you can use literally any JSON formatting editor. You can leverage uh, Visual Studio Code, which is the open source uh, tool provided by Microsoft, it has a lot of extensions built into it. If you haven't used it already, I highly recommend leveraging Visual Studio Code. Deploy a couple of extensions, no matter which programming language you are working with, there will be an extension for that and uh, try it out. It has native integration with, Git, uh, with GitHub as well. You will definitely love it as an editor. Visual Studio is another IDE uh, that is very powerful. It needs Azure SDK installed, and then it can provide you natively the development tools to develop the ARM templates right from your Visual Studio screen. Now, this brings us to the second demo. We'll look at uh, using Visual Studio to create an ARM template, and then we'll look at how to deploy an ARM template, multiple ways to do that. This is going to be second and the last demo for this particular presentation. So I already have an ARM template opened up, but if I do not have anything, if I, let's say, close this particular solution, if I have to build from start, this is the screen that you will see when you open uh, the Visual Studio IDE. Very simply, you can go to File, New, and create a new project. And then if you have the, I, uh, the cloud related Microsoft Azure later extension deployed. You can navigate to the cloud section and in here you will see Azure resource group as the type. You can provide it with any name. And then hit OK. And then it immediately pops up a wizard which will let you find out a template that want to reuse from, from the quick start template that we just saw. So you see it has not just a quick start template that uh, we were checking out. It also has a featured quick start guide. It also has uh, Azure Stack related quick starts. Azure Stack is Azure's version uh, for on-prem management, which sits behind your firewall. Uh, but it leverages the same ARM templates, the same concepts that we have been learning, the same apply to Azure Stack one-to-one. -one. You even have Visual Studio templates, which comes from the Visual Studio repositories. So in here, let's say if I want to um, build a virtual machine, you have multiple templates for that. Uh, let's use this particular template, 101 VM Simple Windows. 
and uh, if I hit OK, it will start creating the project for me. Behind the scene, it connects to GitHub, and it downloads that particular sample template, and then it shows me that uh, template on the right-hand side. I can double-click on the JSON file, and immediately the JSON outline window pops up, and it shows me what all sections are there. If I collapse all the sections under the hood, these are still the three sections that we talked about, or the five or six sections that we talked about, that is schema, content version, parameters, variables, resources, and outputs. The three sections that we are interested in are parameters, variables, and resources. Within the parameter, you have multiple, uh, uh, within the parameter section, you have multiple parameters, as we saw earlier. Uh, these are your admin username, admin password, DNS uh, label prefix, Windows OS version, uh, and location, etc. As you can see, the parameter for location, it can get a value uh, that you can provide as an input, or if you do not provide any input to this, the default value will be coming from the helper function we talked about uh, in the session. This helper function is finding out the location for this particular location uh, parameter from the resource group to which we are going to deploy this uh, particular template dynamically. Now this location parameter will then reference by uh, multiple resources. As you can see that there are five resources in total inside this array of resources as depicted by the square parentheses. If I expand the resources, it even shows me the icon through which I can determine what kind of resource uh, this is. For example, there is a storage account, there is a public IP address, there is a virtual network, a uh, network interface card, and then the VM itself. If I go to the storage account, like res uh, the a resource like the storage account and inspect its location, it is coming from the parameter for the location uh, which we are providing as a value. Its name is coming from the storage account itself. And inside the storage account, you can see the template is uh, leveraging the concat function. And what two things it is concatenating? It is concatenating a unique string that it will automatically create from resource group ID. Unique string is another uh, helper function. In here, what we can do is uh, we can concat two values. So for example, uh, it is concatenating the first value as ST101, and then the second value is SA win VM. So it will concatenate these two things and will create a VM. Uh, this VM is for diagnostics, diagnostic logs. So I'll have diag. I can simply provide the value for this particular storage account. Only for the demo, I'm providing it in this manner. And finally, once I have this particular template, um, one last thing before I proceed to the deployment, I want to show you the virtual machine template, which has the depends on parameter. So as you can see, it depends on two things. One is the storage account name, which is which it uses internally for all the diagnostic related uh, requirements. And then the second one is uh, the NIC card of this particular storage account uh, or for the VM. Now, once you have the template, you have authored all the changes that you want to make to this particular template. You want to deploy this template. All you need to do is you can right click and select deploy. Another option, once you open up uh, this context menu, you see is the validate option. Validate option is something that you should always execute. You just click on this. It will connect to your subscription. It will ask for a resource group. You can create a new resource group or leverage an existing one. For this demo, we'll create a new resource group. I need to provide a location for the resource group and a name for the resource group. And then I hit create. And then I click on validate. It asks me for value for these particular entries. I hit OK. It validates the password related value again, and then 
it goes uh, con tries to connect to Azure, tries to see whether this particular template can be deployed there or not. Uh, you can check the result in the uh, output screen. It will go and uh, tell you whether the template is valid or not. It says that the template is invalid. Uh, there is something uh, in the template that is causing it to be uh, not correct. What we can do is uh, we can try to deploy this template or for the sake of the time, I can create a new project with a simpler template. So this is a template I'll use for the demo or for the deployment section. This is a demo. Uh, this is a template that we have, which is deploying only a single resource, uh, which is of type uh, storage account. And what I'll do is I'll click on deploy and create a new deployment for this particular template. So our resource group was already created. So I'll reuse that particular resource group and hit deploy. And behind the scene, under the hood, it is executing this uh, PowerShell script, which is to deploy Azure resource group. Uh, and then it performs the deployment and checks the deployment status every five seconds. Once the deployment will be done, it will show that deployment succeeded here. And then I will be able to navigate to the Azure portal and show you that de particular deployment. While this is happening, let's navigate to the Azure portal. In the Azure portal, I'll go to the resource group section and we'll try to find the resource group that was created uh, through the template deployment. And in here, you can see that the storage account has been created. And you can see here that uh, the template was successfully deployed. Its name was uh, dynamically created by using store and then a unique string. Uh, if I come back to the Azure portal, it says store and then the unique string for that particular st storage account. Now, the, another way of deploying the same template is uh, to click on uh, create a resource and then searching for template deployment and then hitting create and then you can find out the github template right from here so for example this template and then you can edit the template, edit its parameters, provide the different values right from the portal itself. And then once you hit uh, agree and then hit purchase, this template will also do the same thing. Uh, it will deploy the template for you. You can click on edit template to make any changes to this particular template right from within the Azure portal. And then deploy it right from here, right from within the Azure portal. That concludes the second demo. If there are any other questions, I can take those up. We don't the last have any section other we have in the perfect. The last section that we have is is deployment of ARM templates. So we already saw this in action. The different options that you have is uh, directly from Visual Studio. We saw this in action. Directly from Azure Portal. We saw this briefly and then using Azure PowerShell commandlets. A way to cheat around that is uh, you use uh, Visual Studio or you use uh, even the GitHub samples. It comes prepackaged with a PowerShell script. You open the PowerShell script, inspect it, and take the commandlet from within the PowerShell script to actually deploy your template. You don't need to build a new PowerShell commandlet every time you are creating the template, or you don't even need to know what the PowerShell commandlet is. You can inspect that with PS1 file and find out the commandlet from there. So what's next? Uh, that's all we had in this particular section uh, or in this particular session. What are the next things that I would recommend that you can explore and learn more about ARM templates? 
you can uh, create ARM templates for existing Azure infrastructure. Thanks to that question, we already saw this in the demo. You can automatically provide the parameters. You can automate the whole process of providing the parameters. You can build a GUI. You can build uh, another portal through which you can have end users come and provide the request, and then the parameters can be automatically provided to your template. If let's say you have to present the template uh, to your management team, to high level execs, and you want to not present the template, but a graphical representation of the template, you can leverage uh, this armviz.io website from Microsoft to visualize your ARM templates. You can iterate and create multiple instances of a resource. There are some dynamic functions that can automatically do that. So instead of having the VM resource multiple times in the template, you can create only one resource and then have that deployed multiple times by leveraging something called copy index. You can use Key Vault to securely provide information, for example, admin username and password. The password part of that, you can secure it in Key Vault and then reference the value from the Key Vault in your ARM template. So post VM deployment, if you want to run any PowerShell scripts, you can even provide that through ARM template. You can provide extensions uh, with deployment of your VMs through nested resources in ARM templates and lot more. So a lot of these topics I have already covered in uh, the book that I have authored. You can purchase this book for simply 99 cents. Uh, I authored this book as an MVP to help people out but not to make money. So I put it out there on Amazon for the least price possible, which is 99 cents right now. Uh, this is your quick and practical guide to building ARM templates. Uh, it goes over the, uh, the sections that we saw in this uh, particular session and much more uh, in, in this particular book. Other references that I want to quote here are uh, the Microsoft official documentation. That is always the go-to reference for anything lat latest that is happening on the templates. And then the quick start templates that we saw during the demo. So this concludes our session, uh, and I open the floor for questioning. And back to you, Joe, if there are no questions. Thanks, Aman. Yes, feel free to jump in with any last-minute questions here. We'll also be uploading this webinar online, so you can reference it again later. And you'll receive an email link to that in your inbox. So uh, thanks to Aman, and thanks to everyone for joining us today. Have a happy Friday, guys.